The Rock comes in with a CPU upgrade question related to graphics cards. And I like this one because I suspect a lot of people have this question. It is just upgraded from a 2070 Super to a 3080 Ti. He wants to know if he's 3700X, so his Ryzen 7 3700X Zen 2 is holding him back. He wants to know if he should upgrade to the 5950X. He's got 48 gigs of RAM. He's got a 1050 watt power supply. Hello and welcome to Bite Size Tech. I'm your host, Rogue. And today, a word from our sponsor, Crypto.com, home of the Visa card that pays up to 8% in rewards and the app that pays you up to 14% annually on your crypto stake. Join more than 10 million users on the world's fastest growing crypto app as you trade with confidence on the world's fastest and most secure crypto exchange. Tech has more information and a special sign-up offer at the end of this video. First, thank you for including half of the information we ask for when we do these. Second, please include all the information when we ask when you ask us these questions. Here's the thing. He told us what his current or his old graphics card was Correct. and his new graphics card. Let me address that first. A 2070 Super to a 3080 Ti is an absolutely solid real upgrade. That is a big performance boost, noticeable, 50% more VRAM the newer technologies, better ray tracing, better everything, great choice. 48 gigs of RAM, awesome, you're good there. I mean, the, if you're just gaming, you know, you he probably had 16 and he added 32, 48, great number. He's got a thousand watt power supply, great, fine. Here's the problem. Is your 3700X holding you back? Maybe, it depends. What games do you play? What resolution do you play at? And do you have more than one monitor and do you multitask? Those will all color the answer. Now, having said that, let me give you all of the answers because it's not just The Rock that we're answering, but it's everybody who everybody. may be watching this. First, if you have one monitor and you play in either 1080p or 1440p, on maybe 60 or 75 hertz monitor. In other words, you're not, you don't have a 144 or 165 hertz monitor. You don't have a 4K or an ultra wide, you know, high end monitor. Honestly, your 3700X is, is fine. If you've got one monitor and you've got modest frame rates, under 100 frames per second, it's holding you back a little bit uh, to be sure, but not massively so. The difference in upgrading for just gaming, and he said mainly just game, but on a single monitor in those conditions, a new CPU is a lot of money to spend for a relatively small difference. Game load times, game update times will be faster, menu switching times will be faster, but the game itself is going to run just fine. Now, he might have one of those Samsung Odyssey G9 super ultra wide 240 hertz G-Sync monitors. In which case, dude, why are we even having the conversation? You've got a eight seventeen hundred dollar monitor. You know you should upgrade your CPU. That's the other extreme. Somewhere in the middle would be like a twenty seven inch fourteen forty p one hundred and forty four hertz or one hundred and sixty five hertz monitor. And he's not a competitive gamer, but he likes to enjoy his good frame rates. And he wants a system that has higher one percent lows and a higher overall median frame rate, not average. I really think we should switch from average frame rates to median frame rates, where 50% yeah. is over. Quick back thing. I think most people know this, but for the small handful of you who don't, average takes all of the frames per second throughout a run, adds them up, divides them by the number of seconds, and that gives you a frames per second. A handful of very low or a handful of very high numbers can throw the average off. Change that and really mess it up. A median basically means middle, essentially. What it does is it would plot out all of the frame rates. You might be at 30 frames a second sometimes, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, it's all over the place. And what it simply does is it simply goes down the line and picks the one right in the middle. And if your median frame rate was 60 frames per second, that means that 50% of the time it is slower than that, and 50% of the time it is faster than that. And that is not what an average is. No. 
If you get 60 frames per second average, that does not mean that 50% of your time, your frame rate will be above 60 frames per second. Simple, simple, simple example. If your frame rate spends 75% of the time at 30 frames per second, and 25 25% of the time, did I say 75%? 75% of the time at 30. And it spends 25% of the time at like 150 frames per second. First of all, that is a ridiculous variation that will be an awful gaming experience. But putting that issue aside, your average frame rate will in fact be over 60 frames per second. Mm -hmm. does, does varying between 30 and 150 up and down sound like it would be a good experience? No. But the average frame rate chart wouldn't tell you that. Now, a 1% low would tell you that in the sense that it would definitely tell you that your 1% is pretty close to 30, but it wouldn't tell you the median. Nope. And the average there would be closer to, I'd have to do the math, would be closer to like 70 to 80 frames per second, but the median would be down at like 45. And that would tell you a lot more than an average. Correct. We really probably should switch to median frame rates and not average frame rates. But putting that issue aside, if, 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 the Rock has two or more monitors. If he's watching YouTube videos, Twitch streams, multitasking, if he's got a game on one monitor and he's doing something on the other, if he's got a lot of background tasks running, maybe he's got multiple G drives and one drive syncing, running backups, uh, NAS sync to work. Now he said mainly gaming, so maybe he's not doing all that. But again, this answer is for everybody watching. If you're doing more than just game on one monitor, then going from a 3700X to a 5900X or a 5950X would help. In fact, even for that matter, going to a 5800X would help because your 3700X is really two four-core chips glued together. Correct. It's two four-core CCXs with Infinity Fabric, which causes a latency delay, and your 32 megabytes of level three cache is actually two 16 megabytes of level three cache with a connection between them, and so there's a latency delay if you're using all of it. On a 5800X, it's a single Just unified 32 megabyte cache. Have any of that. All the cores are closer together. It's more efficient. If you go to a 5900X or 5950X, then you double your cache to 70, although you do end up with an Infinity Fabric, but it's faster than on Zen 2. And you get about 20% higher instructions per clock cycle, plus a little bit higher clock speed and a more modern chip. But he didn't say what motherboard he has. No, I was going to say, he, no, he did not. If you've got a 500 series board, boom, you're done. Go get yourself a Ryzen 9 and be done with it. You just bought a nearly $2,000 video card. At yeah. least go buy a Ryzen 9 5900X. If, however, you have a 300 or 400 series board, the 300 series does not support Zen 3. Yeah. The 400 series sort of does. I know a lot of BIOSes have been updated to support it. I have run Zen 3 on 400 series boards. It's hit and miss. If I was going to do that, I'd replace the board, which I know is a pain, but I would. And if you're the kind of person who's got 30, uh, 3080 Ti money, make sure you have a 500 series board before you go to Zen 3. Do you just need to add to all that? No, it'll be dependent on your use case. So whatever your use case is, is what you need to do. If it's working for you, do nothing. If you want more, then you need more. That actually brings up a really good point. Whether it's worth upgrading is partially a logical decision. Uh, is my graphics card bottlenecking my CPU? Well, that can be objectively measured by looking at CPU and graphics card utilization. However, your graphics cards can still be used 100% of the time, but there's still gonna be a performance difference between Zen 2 and Zen 3, especially on that kind of video card. There just will be. How much of a premium user are you? Some people are perfectly happy with the Toyota Corolla experience. Not to disrespect Toyota Corolla owners, Insert any other reasonable budget price car in that category, Honda yeah. Civic, whatever. Some people drive a Lexus. A Lexus doesn't get you to work any faster or any better than a Toyota. Maybe I should have said Camry. We're not a car channel. A, a, a Lexus does not get you to work faster 
than a Toyota Camry. It doesn't get you to work cheaper. It doesn't get you to work... It doesn't really even haul more. I mean, they're basically the same size. All the Lexus does is does it with better leather, better sound insulation. It's fancier. It's fancier. People are okay to spend money on a Lexus because they want that experience. I think one of the biggest mistakes that, that I see with all the testing and benchmarking is people go, well, if it isn't strictly necessary or if it's not 100% being utilized, what's the point in spending money on it? That just seems like a waste. Do you want the Toyota experience or do you want the Lexus experience? Because a Ryzen 9 5900X is going to be fine for just gaming, but a 5950X is like getting the Lexus LS500 and the full trim package and everything else. And it's not strictly necessary, but if you've got the $700, you will eventually be glad you have it. Now, today, tomorrow, next week, you'll grow into it. It'll last you a long time. Buy the nicest CPU you can reasonably afford without hurting yourself. Thanks, Rock. Uh, the Rock came back in. He said, sorry, forgot some info. <laughs> Whoopsie. Uh, ASRock X570 Pro 4 is his motherboard. 165 hertz, 1440p Azus G-Sync monitor, AAA games. So 5950X, without a doubt. Yeah. If you can afford that board, that monitor, and that video card playing AAA games, go buy yourself a Ryzen 9 16 core chip because then you're done. You are done you can skip Zen 4 and probably Zen 5, and you can just enjoy it for several years before you have to worry about it. Probably just need a GPU upgrade in there. That's about it. After two or three years, he'll he'll want a midlife GPU upgrade. But he can probably, you also may need a cooler upgrade, keep in uh, mind. Your yeah, current cooler, you you're going to want bigger is better. How many of you have a Visa card that pays you up to 8% on every purchase? Crypto.com offers an amazing deal on their Visa card with cashback that is an unbeatable deal. No annual fee, no sign-up fee, no credit checks, no interest payments. It works just like a prepaid debit card, allowing you to spend your money anywhere Visa is accepted. But wait, there's more. Get your Spotify, Netflix, and Amazon Prime subscriptions 100% paid for by Crypto.com. You heard me right. Use your new crypto Visa card to pay for your subscriptions and get 100% back in rewards. Earning 8% on your new Visa card is awesome, but how would you like to earn up to 14% interest on your crypto holdings? If you're holding crypto for investment, inflation protection, or price speculation, it can be frustrating to feel like your money is just parked. Yes, you really can earn up to 14% annual interest on your crypto paid weekly directly to your account to spend however you like. The interest is paid in the same token that you're holding. So if you have Bitcoin staked, you are in Bitcoin. If you have Ethereum staked, you are in Ethereum, and so on. Flexible terms are offered, including zero lock, so you can withdraw your crypto anytime you like without restrictions, or you can hold for one or three month terms for a higher rate of return. Of course, you can buy, sell, and exchange 100 plus cryptocurrencies with 20 plus fiat currencies using bank transfers or your credit and debit card at true cost. Crypto.com is first and foremost a crypto exchange. There is so much more to explore, I have barely scratched the surface. DeFi features including a private wallet with full control of your private keys, margin and derivatives trading options for advanced traders, crypto credit allows you to borrow against your holdings with no deadlines or credit checks, crypto NFTs allows you to explore the new world of non-fungible tokens, crypto pay allows you to pay any merchant with crypto and you earn up to 10% back in rewards, and that's not even everything they have to offer. If you're looking for the place to be in crypto, use our link in the video description below to sign up today, you'll get a $25 crypto sign up bonus and 30 days of 0% transaction fees on credit and debit card purchases of crypto. It supports the channel and it gets you a great offer to get started in the world of crypto.